guys, it's V, and welcome back to another episode of Whisk Me Away. I will show you different ways to bring your wafer paper back to life and how to store it. So, without further ado, let's see what we can whip up. Have you ever encountered dried out wafer paper? I have, and I had 20 packages of wafer paper and I thought they were all ruined. Thankfully, I figured out some easy tricks to turning cracked out wafer paper to a flexible consistency you can work with. A common confusion is getting wafer paper mixed up with edible icing paper. As you can see, icing paper is more opaque and wafer paper is a bit translucent. Icing paper is awesome, but it is very limited to the things you can do with it. It is mainly known for printing edible images, whereas wafer paper acts a lot like regular paper. The first thing you need is a humidity thermometer. This will help you know if your workspace is too moist or too dry. You want the meter to be around 50 to 80, which is moderate and a bit humid. Next thing you might consider is getting a humidifier if you live in a dry climate. Sometimes those can be a bit pricey, so the other option is getting a steamer. But make sure you don't steam the wafer paper for too long or else it will dissolve or curl up the ends too much. As you can see, I quickly ran it through the steamer and then I am able to fold the wafer like a fan without it breaking. And if you are on a really tight budget or wasn't prepared for any of this, then I highly recommend using dry ice. Not to mention, it is super fun to play with. This is a continuous footage of me reviving a dried out piece of wafer paper. There's no tricks here and it's the same piece of wafer. I fast forward this part because I didn't want you guys to waste your time watching this 5 minute process. Make sure that your wafer paper is on top of some towels. The condensation from the dry ice will leave the mat wet. You want to be in control of how much moisture you want your wafer paper to get. Also, have some patience for this part. It could take anywhere from 1 to 5 minutes for the wafer paper to absorb the moisture. After about two and a half minutes, you want to flip this piece over. You can see that it is a lot more flexible than when we first had it. This is the same piece of dried wafer paper. And look, we can bend it and fold it with ease. I didn't show this, but if all else fails, try misting water onto your wafer paper with a spray bottle. So now you know how to revive your wafer paper. Here are some ways you can store it. Easiest method is to wrap it in saran wrap. Make sure you cover up all the openings. If you are still worried, use a large Ziploc bag. This isn't to scale, but make sure you get a Ziploc bag big enough to hold your paper. And don't forget to seal it all the way. This is a brown sugar bear, which is meant for keeping things like brown sugar soft longer. It's really simple to use. You just let this cutie pie soak in water for a little bit, take it out, and then wipe off any excess water. Then we are ready for the next step. These large storage boxes are great if you have a lot of wafer paper. Just put all your wafer paper inside of it and then add your little brown sugar bear. Keep the thermometer in there as well to keep track of the moisture levels. The brown bear will only last for a couple of months, so you will need to put in water again. Another inexpensive way is to put moist towelettes inside, but those tend to dry out quite fast.
I want to say thank you so much again for watching this tutorial. I know it's not as enchanting as my other ones, but it is very helpful once I start making amazing designs with wafer paper. So, until next time, stay sweet and eat dessert first.